Well, hello and welcome to Always the Wild Ones. If it's your first time here, my name is Vanessa Lee. And today I am going to be showing you my top seven plants of the month. These are the plants that I have been, as my eyes are opening when I wake up in the morning, I'm thinking about them and it's the first plants that I'm going to go and check uh, with my cup of coffee and just stare at them. <laughs> so yeah, let's get into it. Let's get started. I'm actually going to take you into the hallway for the first one because... Oh my gosh, I have the most gorgeous Hoya out there that has just bloomed. It literally bloomed this morning. The flowers are open. So of course, I mean, she was already on the list because, you know, every morning I'm checking to see, oh, are they open? Are they ready yet? Has she flowered? And she's also got some other pedungles, but I'm gonna stop talking about it. Let's go and have a look. So we are in my hallway and here she is. This is my Hoya Crimson Queen. And check out that bloom. I mean, oh my God. And it's so chunky. She has bloomed once before, but this one, oh my goodness. This one is really much, much bigger and just kind of, Quite, quite strong looking. I mean, look at the, if you can see, let me get the better lighting, here we go. You can see how thick that stalk is. There. Yeah, a really strong bloom. And she's in front of this window, which is a beautiful breeze coming through here. That rooftop looks a bit like a mountain. Just kind of got a bit of deja vu of Cape Town there. <laughs> Yeah, oh, an aeroplane, that's fun. Yeah, so I have had this plant for, I think about 10 months and she came on a trellis. Um, I straight away took it off the trellis, but she had one pedungle and had bloomed and I knocked that pedungle off, which was really, really sad. But I've managed to do quite a lot of, well, I've propagated her quite a lot and she's grown back like she's huge. Let me show you all the other pedungles. So I don't know if you can see that one there. She's just getting ready. So I'm guessing we're going to get some more flowers, fingers crossed. And then there's another one. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Right there. She also looks like she's getting ready to do something. Oh my gosh. Oh gosh, she's so pretty. I mean, I didn't buy the Hoyas for the flowers, but now that I have the flower, I'm like, what was I thinking? Of course I need Hoyas with the flowers. They're so waxy, aren't they? I mean, I don't know if you can see exactly how waxy they are but oh she's gorgeous look at me i've got hoyas that actually bloom this is my second hoya that's bloomed well third really but um the two before were the same my hoya parasitica and that was a white flower so now we've got this gorgeous pink and then the burgundy inside Oh, she's pretty. Um, she, this plant, I actually moved. She was where the burrito is. Um, or was she here? No, she was there. Sorry, no, she was there. Um, and she's taken the place of my spider plant, which is in the kitchen now, which is why there's a spare one here. But also I have... I want to get a, I'm, there's a plant that I want to buy. <laughs> there's a plant that I want to buy and that's its space. So that's why that's empty there. But yeah, so this is number one. Oh, yeah, she's a pretty, pretty little girl. Little lady. Oh, okay, let's stop staring at her now. Let's go and check out the others. So we are back in my living room and the next plant on the list is 
my philodendron splendid and I have had this plant for about two months or maybe yeah I think it's been about two months or a month I don't know I'll put the correct date up but look at the light on those leaves absolutely gorgeous and not only is she looking absolutely gorgeous this is a new leaf right here but we've also got one on the way so proud and we also have one here so this plant when i bought it actually came on a moss pole like one of those cocoa core ones the really stabby ones didn't like it took it off there put it on a d-shaped moss pole and it's clearly really loving it um, there were actually four pieces of the plant originally. I've got two over there now. Well, that was messy. <laughs> um, and then I've got two here. But there's more. There's more that I want to show you. Check out those roots. Clearly loving the pole. And I've definitely not had this longer than two months. So yeah, I was, I mean, I'm surprised because when you look at where the roots would be coming from, they look dried up and I just didn't think that they would actually activate. So yeah, I mean, they look really kind of dry, right? So yeah, that was such a good surprise. And you know what? I only spotted that today when I got back from the gym. Finally went to the gym. It was my first day back. I'm going to pay for it because I really, I was in there for like hours. I'm going to really pay for it. <laughs> anyway, back to the plant. It's enough about me. Oh, I can just, I stare at this plant a lot. I really do. And she's just so bouncy and, you know... I haven't done very much with her at all. Like I don't fuss around her. You know, I water the moss pole. So in, in the top here, I've got a cup. Has the water gone down yet, actually? Oh, it has, finally. The cup has a hole in the bottom. And so it kind of like, it's like a drip effect. And I just fill the cup. I use my squeezy bottle because, you know, like I can't use the watering can because it's too high. So yeah, I just kind of like tilt it in there and squeeze in the water. And that keeps her going for the day. And I'm, do, I'm probably doing that every two days, but now that the weather has suddenly gone back to summer, I'll probably be doing it every day. But yeah, oh my gosh, she is stunning. So yeah, I mean, she did come with a bit of damage I think too crazy actually. I mean, oh, actually, no, this is the crazy leaf. This one was unfurling as it arrived, and what's that on my finger? As it arrived, and that moss pole, the one that I was talking about earlier, the scratchy one, I think it, that is the culprit. That's what caused that damage. But you know what? She's looking really bouncy. She's looking a lot better. She was not looking like that at all before. <laughs> Um, but the leaves are looking really, really good. And her latest leaf is perfect. I mean, oh, I can see a little bit of... Oh, no. That's sphagnum moss. <laughs> just blow it off. <laughs> yeah, it's just a bit of sphagnum moss. Um, oh, she feels so fluffy and soft. <gasps> yeah, I really don't do that. I've got a friend who... Um, she just touches her plants all the time, but I try not to. I mean, I try not to get in their space too much. I mean, they're little wild things, you know. They're not used to being patted like a puppy. So, um, but I can see why she does that. I can see it's very, like, sensory, like, quite soothing. I now want to touch it again. I really want to, but I'm not going to. And then even the oldest leaf is looking pretty good. She doesn't look like she's on her way out at all. That's actually probably the largest out of the out of all the leaves. Hopefully she'll start sizing up. That one's a pretty good size though. And that's from the second plant. So the 
she might even size up more. I don't know. Still too early for me to be able to give information on sizing up with this plant because I have only had it two months. Okay, moving right along. Um, <laughs> this isn't going to be much of a surprise to people that have watched any of my other videos because I'm always going on about this plant. I never, I can never get bored of her. Never. Look at that. Oh my gosh, she is just everything. My philodendron lemon lime, she is the queen. She is just doing her thing. She's actually longer, but I pushed her right back before I had to kind of pull further forward so that she could hang, but I just don't want these guys touching at the moment. Well, just generally, I try not to do that. But yeah, I love her and I've had this plant for under two years, I would say a year, maybe a year and nine months, something like that. Grows like crazy. I recently chopped her, I think that was probably about two weeks ago. And let me show you where I chopped and what has happened since then. Cause I'm just amazed at the speed. So you can see I cut it here and there's the new branch. Already, that's, no more than two weeks progress. Um, within the first week, I already saw that tip come up and I was like, whoa. So yeah, pretty much all of them have. So I'm really pleased with that because I mean, it would be such a shame to like stump its growth. But yeah, she's got one there as well. I recently repotted it. I, it's really funny actually I repotted her um I didn't have a pot so I cut up an old water bottle like a you know those really big ones and I put her in there and she straight away she looked dreadful she hated it and I was like okay so I then took my I took my um anthurium clarinervium out of the this vessel that she's in now Anthurium is fine. She, you know, didn't skip a heartbeat. Completely satisfied with what she's got. But this one, I swear to God, the day later, she looked happy and perky again. I, I think I might have done a photograph of when she was looking glum in her plastic box. But she, yeah, she's just like, listen, I'm the queen around here. How dare you put me in a plastic box? She really, yeah. They speak, these plants, I swear, they speak so loudly sometimes. Um, you just need to know the language. <laughs> Let me get a little closer. Well, I'm gonna have to move you a little bit. But yeah, she's looking really good. We've got lots of new things going on. We've got no dying leaves, I'm like, Oh, I'm so pleased that she's looking perky again. I was really worried. I thought, I thought, gosh, what did I do? Why did I, oh, why did I move her? And, oh, um, let me just show you the, the method that I've used. Okay, so at the bottom of the vessel, I've got a reservoir. So she's got a little bit of water in there that will drain off and I will not top that up until it's completely gone. I'll wait three days and then I'll, our water as usual and then we've got lechuza pond and then you might see that like this top bit here has more perlite I don't know if you can see that but the reason I've done that is because I put some cuttings in and the roots on the cuttings were only about maybe an inch which I mean is risky but they're sorted because you know I did that layer <laughs> I thought that was quite clever I think I might start doing things like that more often. Um, okay, let's move on. I mean, yeah, I could really, I could talk more about her, but if you wanna know more about her, you can see, you can check out my philodendron collection. I, I talk about her, but you know, probably for too long. Next plant, let's move on. We are going to my begonia. I never thought 
that I would ever be able to grow this plant outside of a propagation box or humidity box. This plant, I mean, I've had it, I would say a year and a half, and it has been a battle where, oh, I started with the cutting, sorry, let me start at the beginning. Um, I think I had four leaves or two leaves. We'll try and find a photo. And yeah, a year, it's probably been a year, a year and a half. I'll put the correct time up as well. I mean, gosh, she has grown like nuts now, but this plant, I've had it in soil. That's how she began. And I would get these kind of crisping, like the leaves would just crisp up or they would just fall off. Like they would just, yeah, I'd find two on the floor. You know, like just like the double kind of winged situation would just like two would just drop. And I we fought and fought and I lost loads of leaves and then I was kind of like back down to like six leaves. Um and then and then she was living in a propagation box with in soil and I had to hack up part of the plant, which is what that's what's going on over here, and that was living in water but outside of the propagation box and it would, it was fine. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. So I then, I just decided let's experiment. So I put, let's go with the big guy. So I put this plant into pure sphagnum moss. She's got a reservoir of water at the bottom, which I generally make sure is always full, but it's been running out a lot recently. You can see the roots are crazy i mean i don't even know if you'd ever see roots like that on a begonia if it were in soil but yeah she's fabulous look at her i really want to show you the other side of her let's see if you can get the light on her oh here we go look at the red Oh my gosh, she's on fire. She really is so, so pretty. I'm just loving the dots as well. I don't have anything else that's dotty. We've got lots of other kind of, you know, and also I'm really loving these wings, kind of winged effect, the mirror image. You know, we've got a um, this part is not the most attractive <laughs> when the leaf is like coming out of its caterpillar. It just looks a bit like blah, <laughs> but yeah, it looks, yeah, <laughs> enough said, but yeah, so there she is. I did it. I finally found a way to grow this in my, hu in my humidity and with my lighting my environment with my terrible um habits <laughs> i found a way for us to get on and yeah i'm just like i'm just so pleased i actually just bit the bullet and just plunked her in some sphagnum moss so that's the third plant no fourth plant yeah we're on the fourth wow okay let's keep moving oh my gosh the next one <laughs> Oh, is my Ritsalis Paradoxa. Oh, look at the length. Excuse the aeroplane. So I, I propagated this plant recently and it has, where I've cut it, it's grown this new shoe. So I cut it here and I plunked that up the top back in and it's grown which is fantastic, but it's grown like a little offshoot. I've got another one. Where's the other one? Well, here it is. I've got another one here. Look how long it is. I mean, I think I cut it maybe a month or two ago. It grew very quickly. I was hoping it would do this, and it, I suppose it could still do that, where you get the three from the one stem. Whoops. <laughs> um, but yeah, only time will tell. I've had this plant mm, maybe six months. 
I, I don't know. <laughs> I'll put the time up, but not that long. But I do feel like I've kind of worked it out a little bit. This one is looking, um, this one is also living in non-drainage, but she is in a really chunky aeroid mix. You can see lots of pumice and some cocoa corn, some orchid bark. Uh, the reservoir at the bottom, which is completely empty. I don't really ever try and fill that reservoir. I kind of did it just in case I go on holiday. And yeah, that should be a sufficient amount of water for her whilst I'm away or him. tra -la. Oh my gosh, check this one. And like, if you look, there's all these roots. So effectively, I could cut it. Now, if I were to propagate this, I wouldn't cut it close to the roots. I'd probably cut it like around here so that that can be, why are you not focusing? Well, that's annoying. Okay, he doesn't want to focus. Um, yeah, I would cut it about here so that you've got a bit of stem to push into. Ah, here we go. Yeah, so that you'd have a bit of stem to push into the pot. Yeah, it just didn't want to focus there. So that is number five. Okay, moving on to number six, which is my Hoya Australis Lisa. And uh, she, like, I have not really been doing very much with her at all. I did give her a pest control, like a spray down, and I sprayed her with some nutriment and she has had, like, I fussed around her a little bit, but she, yeah, all of this is just her. This is because she is just so strong now. We started with, um, this was actually a cutting that I got. It was sent all the way from Scotland during a heat wave, arrived like a crinkled little, I wasn't even sure if it was a Hoya. I was like, what is this? Um, and yeah, I just persevered. I kept faith that she would bounce back and she has. And we have, I mean, I had just the two shoots up until very recently. And I now have this one is a new shoot. This one like just came out of nowhere. Where is it? Hang on. Oh, this is kind of difficult. Oh, here we go. It's back here. So there's this one which has just been growing like nuts. And then we've got another one back here, which is highly variegated. Check out that. So you can see it's just come out. It will fade to this kind of green eventually. This one's also quite new. And I just love the leaves. It, they're really quite hard to the touch. Um, and if they were ever softer than that, that's like a clear indication that it needs water. And yeah, it's like almost like a pixelated image when you really look at the leaves. Beautiful, super glossy, and she is going for it. She's trying to get to this light here. <laughs> um, and then we got a second one kind of also really trading away. And she is in Le Chusapon with a reservoir at the bottom, which, is it empty? She's drinking, she's a guzzler, she drinks a lot. In fact, all the Hoyas are drinking so much at the moment, like I'm really surprised. The heat is on and these guys are just like, we're gonna grow, so feed us. <laughs> um, yeah, gorgeous baby. If you don't have this plant, or if you don't have any Hoyas, I think this is a great beginner plant. She's oh, she's just so easy. And the fact that I managed to grow this from a shriveled up, three shriveled up leaves. Um, when did I get this actually? It was last year, around this time. No, it was about July actually. But um, yeah, it's a year old. And it's, look, from three leaves to that, that is just amazing. I mean, this is the th another thing about buying Hoyas. Like, I like to have them when they're small. 
because I just know that they're gonna get crazy big and I have very little space. Okay, so we are on to the seventh. And the seventh one is going to be another Hoya. And it is this little guy, my Hoya Rotundiflora, which was from a plant swap. And she has been growing like crazy. Now I had just those four leaves and there was a different kind of stem and it just went brown. And I was like, oh my God, it's dying. But I cut it off. I don't know if you can see where I cut it. Let me see if I can get in there. Hang on, let me find it first. Okay. Oh, it just doesn't want to. Let me stay really still. Yeah, so you can see where that like dead stem was. And then she just grew this one, boom, like that. Within a week, it was just, it just shot out. And two leaves, and then another two leaves. And let me put her down for a minute. Maybe I just need to get my hand in there. And we've got, is that two more leaves or is that, I think that's two more leaves. I do believe it is. Look at the shine on that. And I knew I wanted this plant. I can't actually believe that I have it. I love the fact that the leaves are just so unusual and so unique like that oblong, no, what is it? It's not oblong, it's rectangular, isn't it? What is that? Sorry, oh, it's just a bit perlite. Yeah, I love the shape of the leaf. Um, They feel very tough, really hard. Um, But and weirdly, they have like a kind of fluff to them, which I can never pick up. Oh, hang on. I can see it there. Can you see it on the edge? It's fluffy, but when you touch it, you don't, you can't feel it. You can see there's loads of fluff. Really bizarre, quite weird. But yeah, and she's in the Chisa Pond with her reservoir, which I filled maybe two days ago. It's completely empty. So, I mean, but her leaves are really hard, so I won't be rewatering. Okay, so that's the seven. So, I want to say goodbye. Thanks so much for hanging out. And I hope that you enjoyed the, uh, the video and that you like some of my plants. I hope that you liked all of the seven and that you can see why I've just been so drawn to them this, this month. And I'm just so proud, so proud of all of them. I mean, it was, it's always difficult just choosing the seven, but you know, they're all, I love them all equally. <laughs> but these guys most definitely did just outperform. They, sh they shone, they were the stars, the stars of this month. And I'm so pleased that I got to show you them. So yeah, if you enjoyed the video, do give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button, go ahead and do that because I looked at my analytics and it says 72% of the people that watch my videos to the end do not subscribe. So don't be shy, um, hit the subscribe button. You don't have to pay for it. So I don't know if that's something that maybe prevents you from doing it, but it's free and I enjoy doing this for you guys. Like there's no, you know, you're not gonna get trapped into some weird subscription that you end up paying for every month. It's completely free. And I would love to just have you here permanently with me every Sunday I post and I'll do a random video in the week just to kind of like as a little treat. Anyway, have a fabulous week and I will see you here again very soon. Until then, bye.